I'm Donna Murray. I'm Vice President of Clinical Programs for Autism Speaks, and today we're going to be talking about how do I know which autism treatments are safe and effective. At Autism Speaks, we encourage families to seek out evidence-based practice, although we know that's a challenge. One evidence-based intervention that we know about is behavior therapy, and it has proven to be effective across the lifespan in learning new skills, addressing communication skills, as well as social skills. In addition to behavior therapies, there are a number of supports that have also been proven to be effective. Things like using visual supports or schedules, as well as using modeling. And you can use real person modeling in real time, as well as video modeling. Challenging behaviors can be very concerning for families. One thing that we really recommend is that before you start an intervention for challenging behaviors, you have a functional behavior assessment. That helps your provider understand what might be triggering those behaviors. And then you can employ some of the behavior therapies that we talked about, or if you're still, or the child is still experiencing behavior challenges, may also be combined with medication. But it's really important to work closely with your provider when coming up with a plan for challenging behaviors. Some of the work that we've been doing in the Autism Treatment Network is doing a better job of understanding some of the medical and mental health conditions that co-occur with autism. And sometimes when we can treat these medical and mental health conditions, we see improved functioning. The common co-occurring conditions that we've been looking at in the Autism Treatment Network include epilepsy, sleep, GI issues, anxiety, and ADHD. When you see your provider, they may ask you a lot of questions about behavior. And this is really important because what we have found is that co-occurring conditions can sometimes impact outcomes or daily functioning. So it might be a really good place to start is to treat some of these medical co-occurring conditions. For example, if your child is demonstrating some behavior issues, your physician might ask you about sleep. We do find that children with sleep, disrupted sleep can impact their behavior. And so they, they might implement, um, rather than medication right away, they may suggest things like a sleep routine to start with that. If that's not working, then maybe some cognitive behavior therapy or melatonin. But it's really important when considering medication, you work closely with your provider, even if it's over-the-counter medication. If something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. It's really important that you talk with your provider. Ask your provider questions. Ask them what method they're using for therapy and why and what is the evidence behind it. You really should feel empowered to talk with your provider about what they're doing and why, and also how you can partner with them so that you can translate what they're doing in therapy in your home environment or school environment. One way that you might feel more comfortable about asking questions is to read about the current evidence-based practice. It's changing, so it's important to stay up to date. Two good sources include the Autism Speaks website and the National Standards Project. We really encourage families to talk to your provider about any concerns. Early intervention has evidence to have the best outcomes. The earlier we start intervention, the better. And that's why it's important not to wait for a full diagnosis. If you have a concern about communication, go ahead and talk to your physician and you can start therapy right away.